What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. This video is about anti-squat suspension geometry. In this video, you will learn what is anti-squat suspension geometry, how to set up and calculate anti-squat, traction in anti-squat geometry, what percentage of anti-squat is preferred in different categories of vehicle. So without spending much time, let's start now. Any type of anti-geometry is a form of geometry at front and rear wheels that alters and control the amount that a car will compress the springs due to acceleration, deacceleration or braking conditions. Anti-squat geometry is for the rear wheels under acceleration conditions. Here is your car. All the forces acting upon a car act through the center of gravity. The center of gravity is therefore the center of rotation for any acceleration or braking inputs. During acceleration, due to linear inertia changes, the car will rotate backwards around the center of gravity, therefore lifting front of the car and diving of the rear. In order to prevent this rotation from happening or to limit the amount of rotation, an opposing force needs to be applied at center of gravity. This opposing force comes in the form of anti-geometry. Anti-squat is a suspension geometry that affects the amount of rear suspension deflection when the car accelerates, which means the spring and suspension arms are sharing the load in some proportion. If we have 100% anti-squat geometry, all the load is taken by the suspension arms. Now let's set up the anti-squat geometry and calculate the anti-squat geometry percentage. Anti-squat geometry is analyzed in the side view of vehicle. Here this is the center of gravity position of vehicle. These are the mounting points of upper and lower wishbone connected to chassis. First of all, a line must be drawn through the two mounting points of rear upper wishbone towards the front of the car. Next, another line needs to be drawn that passes from the lower wishbone mounting points towards the front of the car. Where these two lines intersect is the instantaneous center IC shown by the red circle. Finally, a line needs to be drawn from the center of rear wheel contact patch to the instantaneous center IC shown by the blue line. And this blue line is the side view swing arm of rear suspension geometry. Now this blue line intersect with the vertical line passing through the center of gravity and gives us the percentage anti-squat AS which is given by AS divided by H into 100. This blue line is the side view swing arm of suspension geometry having the vertical distance from the ground equals to SVSA height and the horizontal distance equals to SVSA length. X is the distance from the rear tire center to the COG line. The swing arm is making an angle beta which we can write as tan beta equals to SVSA height divided by SVSA length. Also tan beta is given by AS divided by X. From these equations we get percentage anti-squat equals to X multiplied by tan beta multiplied by 100 divided by H. So this is the value of percentage anti-squat. Now if we make an assembly in which the blue line intersect with the center of gravity, we will get 100% anti-squat, which is generally avoided because it causes rear to lift instead of squat during acceleration. Now let's see how anti-squat can provide the traction. If the vehicle has plenty of power but not much traction, then the acceleration of that vehicle will be limited by the amount of traction. The vehicle is said to be traction limited. A traction limited vehicle will be benefit from the increase in traction. You know the amount of weight or load transfer that occurs during acceleration is determined by the three things. First is the magnitude of accelerating force. This cannot be changed while using the same gearbox and engine combination. Second is the wheelbase. This is also not variable. Third is the height of center of gravity. This can be changed by anti-squat geometry and this will change the load transfer which will affect the traction of car. You can see from the formula, higher the height of center of gravity, higher is the load transfer at rear during acceleration. Here the car is having a CG height equals to H, due to which the weight transfer during acceleration on the rear tire is given by WR. Now if the car is not having anti-squat geometry, it will squat and this will lead to the lowering of CG position to H1 which will change the weight transfer at rear to WR1. Because of squatting, H1 is less than H, this means WR1 is less than WR. So from here we get if the car is having anti-squat geometry at time of acceleration, it will prevent the car from squatting and maintain the proper height of CG. This will lead to more weight transfer at rear tire. Now let's see what is anti-squat percentage preferred for different categories of vehicle. 
case 1 is NT squad greater than 100%. Suspension systems with NT squad value over 100% will cause the rear end of vehicle to raise up and unload the rear suspension under acceleration or when the rear tire contacts an obstacle at high speed. These characteristics are desired for drag racing and heavy acceleration application because the force that push the rear end up also push the rear tires down for more traction. So NT squad percentage between 140 to 180 works well for drag racing on smooth pavement with heavy rebounding volving. NT squad between 110 to 150 works well for rock crawling and rock bouncing. NT squad between 100 to 130 percentage works well for mud drag racing and also for the hill and hole racing. Case 2 is the NT squad less than 100 percentage. Suspension system with NT squad value less than 100 percent will cause the rear end of vehicle to drop down and compress the rear suspension under acceleration or when the rear tires contact an obstacle at speed. These characteristics are desired for desert racing to absorb the rough terrain at speed because the impact forces are transferred directly to the rear suspension. So NT squad percentage between 10 to 50 works well for high speed desert racing. From 20 to 80 percentage works well for open road and rally racing. Now the third case I am taking when NT squat is 100%. Suspension system with 100% NT squat value will have no effect on the chassis under acceleration or when the rear tire contact an obstacle at high speed. These characteristics make the vehicle neutral and keep the power and suspension dynamics independent. So the 100% NT squat is generally preferred for multi-purpose vehicle. So this is all about NT squat suspension geometry. If you have any queries regarding the video, you can comment in the comment box. Thanks for watching. If you find the video useful, do like it, share it. Also, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. If you want to check my blogs on vehicle dynamics, automobiles and software, you can check on my website. The link is in the description box. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring.